Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is a big lithium ion battery. If we get a zoom in on it, it's a ZL4830 LFP lithium iron phosphate, I imagine. 48 volts, 30 amp hours, so 1.44 kilowatt hours, which is quite big. Weighs 14 kilos, 2020. This makes it about and 925, so it's actually almost bang on four years old and has a serial number there and whatnot. It came from a pallet truck. I picked it up as scrap it should have i've disconnected it because i had it open there a few days ago it has a toggling switch up here with a led on the side i've taken the screws out the, the the light works i've just disconnected it as all well. inside it's got some battery management systems and stuff i've taken out the screws in the bottom you want to see if this slides up like that it does that's a metal case steel i'd say so it has A lot going on here we'll try and puzzle out this red tube on the side is the socket where the power comes from the battery into the unit itself this i think is a relay and that's the negative side there so i think hmm, it's 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 covered in glue oh it's a load of um it's a load of big flat pouches How many are in here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I can't count them. They're covered in sauce. <laughs> One, two, three, four. That's four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I make on that side. I don't know if I'll be able to count them. They're kind of half potted in there. Fifteen. Given that it's a 15S, it should be compatible with my pylon tech battery. Now, Andy Reynolds, I was with Andy last weekend, and he just put a jump lead on up here on the top to here, and a jump lead on down here to the uh, to the relay, to the positive out, and he just, uh, just energized it, basically, and it worked. Now, it has this set of connectors here, in here, that must tell the battery that it's plugged in or something and then the relay comes on so the relay comes on to let power out so i don't really know beyond that what's going on here up on top it has a fuse 100 amps by the looks of it it says 100 on it then it has three resistors across there so it's like two fuses don't know battery negative pack negative that's what it says there I think it really needs to be kept in the steel case to keep a squeeze on it here. I could draw these leads out here. Now I'm not entirely sure. I've got some extra clips there that aren't doing, oh, they were for the light up on top. Okay, so they're just, uh, one must go to the switch and the other must go to the bulb. Those are. Now we've got four cables going into four here. Let's just disconnect that. Yellow going into black and black going into black over here. That doesn't help me either, does it? Get this cable tie off here. Right, so they go to those that activation type thing there and then on this side here you've got these going to the relay two wires going into the same place that's quite bizarre and so these guys must tell the battery something but what some kind of communications so i'm not sure if we need them or not but we'll just try and charge it and discharge it and see what happens i guess watch the voltage on it so here let's take this off i think this is charged already and it's held the charge nicely for the last while. Let's not touch that off anything. Right, now can I get these out of here? How are they fitted in? That's all glued up shut. That won't stop us getting in, I don't think. Oh, maybe it will. Interesting way of just putting glue on top of things to try and stop people like me getting in. Really like stabbing around the, the battery pack there with no shielding on it, but this fell off here as well. All 
right up on top. Let's clean this guy up. There we go. That's the plug out. I'll take that screw off there. Push this guy out. And that's our, that's our set of cables there. So it doesn't have any cable. And I don't have any plug that'll do that. So looks like these pins are all held in with little allen keys let's pull them out then so i could attempt to sell this for the right application but i'm not going to do that i don't know anything about it so i don't really want to do that pretty useful little system here so the ends are already terminated nicely for me and just pretty solid blocks there it's pretty smart as a socket goes Right, so I can put these back again up on top now, I guess. Like that. And then the live would be best made up with something, I'm guessing, as a sandwich. With a nut and bolt between it. And a bit of shrink on it or something. Let's just have a look at the voltage on it there. 49.7 is what it's given me. Pretty good. Should be a bit higher, maybe. I don't know. So I think what I need to do is match the voltage with the Victron, not the Victron, with the other one, and then just use some of these clips here and just plug it straight into the front of the battery. I don't think that would do any damage. Of course, it might, might blow up my battery, kill it. Who knows? I guess we just have to give it a go. So I need to find a way to join these cables that came out of the battery. There's a black one somewhere as well. A pair, a pair of these. I need to join these, these ends here, onto something like this if I want to plug it straight into the Pylon Tech. So to do that, Andy's given me these links. These come with Pylon Tech batteries, and there tends to be loads of them left over because if you're putting in a single battery, you always have these left over. The way to get off the end is to make a saw cut on this right hand ridge, all the way around, all the way down. You unscrew this fellow here first, all the way down so that it winds up like this. Saw cut all the way down, and then an angled cut here and here. So the cut's all around and inside, is this connector which has this button on the end of it like that so you cut that off too make a saw cut all around then just lever it apart with the screwdriver it just pops out that's for the bin it has a spring in it if you really wanted to get into it but so then you've got an eye connector you can run that out to six mil with a drill bit although i think it might be six mil and then you can bolt something to that so i've got this set of battery extension leads off a lithium ion battery and they've got 10 mil cable which i can't remember what this one is 10 awg i think this is a 16 is it i don't know there's no markings on that cable and this one is 4 awg so this is 25 mil cable uh, 10 i guess is about what does that look like about four mil cable, so two times four is eight. I'd say this is 10 mil. I don't know. Either way, it should be okay. Because I reduced the current on the battery from the Victron, so it's never charging at full current anyway. And if it is charging at full current, Victron records it should be 35 mil. But the Pylon Tech links are 25, so they're still under what Victron recommends. So there you go. So let's cobble something together and see if it works. So it is quite the bodge, but here we are. I've got my Pylon Tech connector. I've got a, I presume it's from a golf buggy or something like that. Brass nut and bolt, the two eyes together, and uh, that's just the cover from the golf buggy, and I'll put tape over that. Insulating tape, again, likewise on the positive. Conveniently, I guess, there's an Anderson connector for the golf buggy. I don't know what it's rated at, but it's quite a big one. 50 amps should be okay and then on this end because i've got to put two into one what i've done is I'll show you on the negative i've taken these little clamps these come out of residual current devices or 
uh, miniature circuit breakers. If you smash them open or take them apart gently, these are the clamps that hold the wires into the residual current device. They're made out of steel, coated in something, and I should be able to slip the cover over that and then tape this up. And then this goes to the battery end here. And they're all nicely tight. So I've got it all connected up. I've turned this off to connect it and isolated it down here. Now it's back on again up here and it seems happy enough. And the battery here was at 50 and that was at 49.2. So it looks like it's charging itself off here, I think. So I could just leave it and see what happens. The Victron over here is very confused. I've just had a look at that on the on the board. So I'd like to turn this off again. Turn it off and give it three or four seconds. It's got a low battery warning coming on there. Let's turn it back on here and turn it back on up here. There's been no alarm or smoke yet. <laughs> which is what I want to see. We're getting lights on there. Run. Four bars. And the inverter's on because it's trying to draw a load. So as far as I understand it, they're just connected solid in behind. So it's just paralleling the two batteries. From the manual, these don't like to be in series and they also don't want any batteries attached to them that aren't pylon tech. But then according to the internet, lots of people have satisfaction doing that. So it seems quite content. It's discharging at about 600 watts at the moment. The sun has gone in, as you can see. PN1 is the only one working on this one. It's gone to zero. This fellow here is making 19 watts. Um, there's one on the floor there. I don't know what it's making. It'll be upside down if it is. Zero watts, that's what I can see on it. So what I wonder is, if I turn this one off now, will the inverter still see this battery? But I don't know what it'll think because it won't have the pylon tech on. So let's turn it off. It says inverter on. It's saying low battery. The inverter's shut off. Now it'll say low battery because the servo up there through the yellow wire, no, the blue wire, through the blue wire is connected to here. So it needs the pylon tech to be on but what I could do is just get rid of the servo and tell it there's a lithium ion and it's a certain capacity and it would work, but then it would be quite dumb. So I guess I need that to be on. I'm gonna check what it says on the app. So inside the app, it's gone to idle. There's just nothing going in or out of the inverter. The charger always stays on. The charger always stays on, but it doesn't always, uh, it stays on bulk at this point because it's still at, I think the battery was at 50 or 60%. Let's turn this back on. And just leave it for a while. So this battery up here is 4.8 kilowatt hours, that US 5000 battery. This one is 1.44, I think. There's a rating plate, we looked at it earlier on. Um, 1.44 kilowatt hours. So that makes 6.2, I think, which is quite an increase. You know, it's an extra 30% or thereabouts. The inverter's just back on again. It seems quite straightforward. I was quite iffy about this until I saw Andy Reynolds' arrangement. He runs the pylon techs dumb, but he has four pylon techs, and he basically just has these cables in. He's put some data cables in, but he wasn't convinced that they were talking to each other. He's put those guys on, and then they should just have their own there's a bms in the top of this that's clearly got its own bms it's very smart but it should really be talking i think through link port zero to the next battery but it expects the next battery to be a pylon tech so the talking configuration wouldn't be right perhaps it might be but it might not be but this guy i don't think can talk it's a bms but it's not a smart bms in any way you now i have a 12 volt battery outside that has a smart bms on it but it's only bluetooth and it wouldn't talk via cable so it wouldn't talk to this so it's kind of where we are it looks like it's working i'm going to monitor it for a while there's no temperature on this one you see there's a but there is actually an auxiliary temperature probe so i could probably that red and black wire there i think is a temperature probe on it i could embed that down at the side of the battery 
to make sure it's okay and just have it as an extra temperature gauge. I'd have to read up on that. At present, this battery and this battery are powering the house completely. So there you go. And if you're interested in the other stuff around here, a lot of the inverters, like these ones, are just sitting here. That switch there is just used as a connector block because it hadn't got any connectors big enough for 35 mil cable, which is what the black stuff is. And instead of buying it, I had all of this stuff here, you know, a plastic box and a 100 amp breaker for AC. So I just leave the breaker on and it makes the contact appropriately. It takes off the 48 volt or thereabouts power to run the servo up here. And then this is a th thermo gauge thermometer. And the idea is that you clamp that onto a battery terminal for lead acid, but I'm not running lead acid anymore. So it just sits in space. In fact, let me see if this one works. So I just tried warming this up in my hand and watching it on the app and the temperature doesn't change. So the temperature that's coming through the multi plus on the servo, little servo up there must be coming from this. 21 is what it was saying, although well, that doesn't feel like 21 either really, but my calibrated thermometer isn't that calibrated. Okay, looks like a success, so I'll leave it to, leave it to charge, leave it to discharge for a while. I have it set to run down to 30%, these can run down to 5% or 95% state of charge, 95% state of discharge. I've set it to 20 over the summer. I'll probably work it up to 50%, but given that I've got this, I'll be I'll get more out of 50% if that makes sense, because half of that is 0.7. Uh, so I'll still get three kilowatt hours out of it in summer, but I won't be reducing the voltage completely. I won't be reducing the state of charge and also the number of cycles will reduce because we're not fully cycling the battery. So it should last longer as well. It should be good. The other thing I've done with the Multi Plus, I think I said about it earlier on about cable size. I must monitor manually the cable temperature victron says for a 48 um, volt system those cables should be 35 mil but the ones above are only 25 mil squared so regardless of that this is a 32 amp inverter and i think i have it reduced down to 16 amps so i've only i've set it to run at about 1500 va uh, and it's a 3000 unit so that should make it last a bit longer. But for now, looks like we're powering the house on an old pallet truck battery. We'll check in before we wrap this up. If you have any questions or comments, if you think I'm mad to be putting a 1200 pound, this was, I think this cost 1200 or 1300 pounds when I bought it new. And I'm cobbling an old scrapyard battery onto it. You know, that's just where we are. I, ha I had, in previous videos, you'll see it. I had four lead batteries sitting up on here and basically, they would have been one kilowatt hour each, except that they had no capacity left. They were ancient and I wasn't running them to full capacity anyway. This battery, if you cycled it at 95%, would have more capacity than the four old ones. So I could have just gone straight to this. Didn't have it and didn't know that at the time. So I forked out 1300 for this. These are now 1100 on the internet. The price is dropping, might come down again over winter. I don't know. I could equally just buy four more of them, second hand or new, hopefully find one in a scrapyard. Who knows, but for now, for now the real issue is that I haven't got the capacity in the solar panels to charge this up. I could probably at most generate 10 kilowatt hours in a day. I can easily use six or seven in a day. So that's the best summer versus in winter, you'll get zero charge in a day, maybe half a kilowatt hour in a day. So you can't top it up over winter. So having the capacity to last for days is great, but you might have, four days of no sun and then one day of two kilowatt hours it isn't going to charge it up so you'd still have to charge it anyway so i might as well have a smaller system that runs as a buffer and kind of into the night it'll carry the house overnight this battery but only if you're just running the freezer and stuff like that if you start cooking with the oven this will be out by the time your dinner's ready <laughs> so that's just kind of how it goes and that and that's not because I use 4.8 kilowatt hours to cook my dinner, it's because it's also set at 30%. So it might take a three kilowatt oven, one hour to cook your dinner. Well, that's three kilowatts, three kilowatt hours of, of cooking um, energy. So this arrangement has been running for a few days now, four maybe, attached on here. It's up to 65% right now. You can see two thirds of the lights on this side are illuminated and the, the app says 65%. The weather hasn't been great. But I reckon, but having done some sums based on the Victron 
software and uh, data, I think it's got about 1.2 kilowatt hours usable that are coming through instead of 1.44. So I've turned a 4.8 kilowatt hour pylon tech, which is a US 5000, into a US 6000, I would say, or 6.2 or some number like that. It seems to work. It seems quite happy. I'll keep an eye for any blue smoke, but for now, I'm quite pleased with it. So cheers to Andy Reynolds at the Infoworks for giving me a heads up on this and a bit of a look at his system. Post any questions, comments or observations below about why this is a bad idea or why it doesn't matter at all and this will just work away. This thing has a BMS and 15 cells. This thing has a BMS and 15 cells. This thing keeps an eye on everything. That thing gathers data, that blue box up there. I've posted other videos before about the Solic, about the MultiPlus 2, about ABB inverters and stuff like that. So if you've got any other questions, you could have a look at the videos too uh, in the solar playlist. That might be helpful. If you found the video helpful or if you want to contribute to the channel, there's PayPal, there's Super Thanks, there's Patreon, and you can become a member. Membership's probably the best one. Uh, Super Thanks is the one-off hit if it's been helpful to you and you want to say hello and goodbye, which is fine with me. Any of those would be very welcome. Although the quickest way is always to give us a like and subscribe and put a comment below because that just means that I know you're alive and I like the engagement. So questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching. See you later.